All right, hi. Welcome everyone who's just joining. We're just waiting for Susani. Hi. Hi. It's been oh, a while. I know. It's been so long, actually. <laughs> How are you? I am doing well, you know, all things considered. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to make the best out of this situation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How's everything? How's life? I'm good, you know, doing my my bit like every dancer in the world, like dancing at home, live streaming some classes. Right. Uh, yeah. So it, this is this has put us in a different kind of, um, you know, world that has forced us to to be creative. Absolutely. Uh, and funnily enough, is 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 bringing dancers together in a different way, you know, regardless of what company you dance for or what rank you're in or, you know, things like that, because everybody is going through the same situation, so. Totally. It's great to be able to take classes with Tamara Rojo I or know. Isabel Bolson. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. So we have to see moving forward, you know, what's going to happen uh, if we can perform anytime soon, because I'm sure mm -hmm. people are going to start doing some sort of performances at home. You wait for it. I'm sure, you know, people are going to start getting even more creative because uh, we're artists and we want to dance. We want to perform. Absolutely. So. Well, only, only yesterday was, uh, wasn't there a big concert with a bunch of um, artists? That was, that was crazy. Yeah, like Lady Gaga, Selena, and yeah. Jenny Hudson, and people like that, yes. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so what is your day like, your quarantine day like, let's say? So, for example, Monday to Fridays, I have the same routine. Um, I'm a pretty early riser, so I always wake up around 6.30 regardless, but I, I start at 10 sharp on mm -hmm. Monday to Fridays, mm -hmm. and I do a class for like an hour and 15, or something like that. Usually on uh, Tuesdays, I live stream, so all the dancers mm -hmm. can, uh, can join. I've um, been asked to live stream for like a ballet concierto de Puerto Rico, and uh, this past Thursday, I live stream for my own company, Colorado Ballet. And right. then after that, I do some like Pilates exercises and things like that. And some afternoons, I have like private lessons that I do through Zoom. Oh. Um, yeah, because I, I used to dance in England for a while and I go there every summer. So I have a couple of students that I've known for a few years and, you know, they reach out to me and they say, would you be willing to give us private lessons through Zoom? Which, you know, if you would have told me this six months ago, like, imagine giving someone a private lesson to a video call. It's kind of bizarre, but, you know, like, now we are adapting. So, uh, yeah, um, why not? Yeah. And then I usually have either, like, Saturdays I take it off because I need a rest. And, like, today I went to the, my terrace. Uh, thank God I have a huge terrace here where I live with my partners. And we did a whole um, heat workout out there hey, for like 40 wow. minutes we, which you know was pretty intense because you know it's a lot of cardio and impact mm -hmm. stuff and things like that mm -hmm. so that was that was pretty fun and then you know that's pretty much it I, I'm actually it's, it's become a little bit of a um, a full-time job uh, uh, this because people are asking me to live stream I'm doing my own training and so it's, it's good to be busy um, today actually for the first time it was the first day that I felt a little bit of that cabin fever that people are talking about that I was a little oh. bit like, gosh, I am starting to get a little bit bored. You know, I miss seeing my friend. I miss right. being able to, you know, to go out and um, meet my friends for dinner, for brunch. I miss hugging people, you know, just mm -hmm. basic human things that we do every day. And sometimes we take for granted. And now you realize because you can't do it anymore at the moment. Uh, you realize, wow, you know, can't wait for for things to go back to normal. So, so yeah, that was pretty much, uh, you know, my life, how it's been for the last, like, four or five weeks. I know, it's intense that we're going, at least here in Canada, we're going into week six of um, isolation. And oh, that, wow. like you say, and I feel like especially with us being Latin, the whole, uh, like, closeness to people just hugging or kissing or whatever it's 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 intense it's it's essential it's, it's part of our dna so yeah. you know not being able to do it is hard so yeah i get it yeah all right um so let me 
I mean, we were just having a little chat in here, and now we have some other people join us. Uh, let me introduce you guys. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Talking with the Stars. Today, we have uh, Giusdani Ramos from Colorado Valley. He's a principal dancer there. Uh, I'm very excited for you to tell us your whole career journey because um, part of the reasons why I'm very excited to have you is you've been in a lot of companies or at least guest in a lot of companies. So why don't you start by telling us how you started dancing and maybe why and where are you coming from? Yeah, so I, um, you know, I'm originally from Cuba and I was in fourth grade, I was nine years old. And um, this lady came into um, the classroom one afternoon and she said, well, we're doing um, tests for ballet school. Um, I knew that ballet was some sort of dance. I had no idea what ballet really was. Yeah, to be honest with you, I never seen ballet before. But um, I was always very creative, and I thought, well, this might, you know, I I remember. I mean, that was like, gosh, that was uh, uh, 31 years ago. Um, <laughs> I remember thinking, you know what? Why not? Uh, and this would probably get me out of this kind of routine of, you know class in the morning, in the afternoon, you have lunch, you have a nap. And then, you know, in school, it was a little bit, I wanted more. So um, I remember walking out of the room and, and uh, she, the people that raised their hands, you know, walked out and she was like, okay, can you do frog? And I did it. And she said, can you point your, your feet? And I remember her saying, which I didn't get it at the time. I remember her going like, <laughs> well, I, I was very flexible since I was little. So um, so that's how the whole thing started. And then for about a year, twice a, uh, twice, uh, a week, we would go in the afternoons to this place. And it was kind of like a, a movement thing. It was not really ballet, ballet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it, they teach you how to move, musicalities, and they uh, help you with flexibility. So what they do is they get you ready to do the, uh, the, the test for the proper ballet school. Because in Cuba, you don't have, like in other countries, you have studios for fun that you can do it for fun in Cuba. If, if there is one national school, you get in or you don't. And that's it. You don't do ballet just for fun. You have to do it seriously. Mm -hmm. And then I did it, my exam. I got into uh, to my uh, vocational. It was a, a school of the vocational arts in Camagüey, which is my city, which every city in Cuba has one. And you have ballet and you have music and, and you have the... Um, people that become painters. Um, and then I was there, you know, for five years. Um, then I moved to the National Ballet School in Havana mm -hmm. when I was uh, 15. And I was there for three years, and um, which was incredible. Uh, those three years uh, that I was in National Ballet School in Havana. So, so the whole thing was uh, eight, eight years of um, uh, school that I did in Cuba. So that was my whole journey as a student in Cuba from 8 to 18 until I graduated. So Great. And um, uh, who was your first company? Is this little touring company in France? Right? Yes, right. So yes, yeah, so I, as soon as I graduated in 1997, I left, I left Cuba and uh, I went to this company in France uh, called Le Jeune Ballet de France. So the Youth Ballet of France. And it was a company that lasted for about 23 years. It doesn't exist anymore. And it had 20 dancers uh, between the ages of 16 to 20. So we, it was a company that would prepare you for the big companies. So we toured all around France. We, toured, we went to Africa, to eight different countries. We went to Russia. We went to South America and Central America for two and a half months on tour. Wow. Um, so... Uh, it was it was incredible. Incredible. We went we, we were to Mexico for five five weeks and we danced with the uh, Compañía Nacional de Danza in Mexico. Uh, we did like a collaboration between the two companies. So I was there for a year and a half, and then I did a, a, a Paris ballet competition and I won gold medal. And the director then of English National Ballet, he was uh, watching the Laureate Gala, and he invited me to come and audition for English National Ballet. I was 19 at the time, so I went to London and I did my audition for English National Band in London. And he offered me to my disbelief and shock because I was, I just was happy to get a job. He mm -hmm. offered me a soloist contract. So, um, 
So yeah, so then I got my job with EMB and I had a gap of six months between uh, the time of the audition to the time I was supposed to start with English National Ballet. Mm -hmm. And they were holding open audition for Paris Opera Ballet. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, why not? So I said bye-bye to the company that I was dancing in Paris. And I was like, well, I'm going to Paris Opera for a little bit. I auditioned, I did the open audition. And then I joined Paris Opera for three months. I did Swan Lake with them. Wow. That was incredible. Wow. Yeah, I danced with dancers like Sylvie Glam and people like that, which was unbelievable, you know. And then, you oh. know, after that, I thought I could either re-audition and I stay here at Paris Opera. But, you know, Paris Opera is a company that has 154, 156 dancers. And I already had my solace contract with English National Ballet. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to London and, and be a soloist instead of spend a few years here as a court de ballet. And then I went to London and, and that was wonderful. I was there with English National for nine years. Uh, yeah, and that, that was incredible. I learned so much. I danced so much. We toured a lot. I danced very young. You know, I did Coppelli at 20, Gisela at 21, Romeo at 22. Wow. Which in retrospective, when I was at that time, you know, it was just normal. And now I look back and I was like, wow, I was, I was extremely lucky to be able to do all of those things so young and I became a principal at 24 and then I wouldn't, after say, that, I wouldn't say it was just luck because from knowing you you are extremely hard-working dancer and like it was definitely not just luck <laughs> yeah I, you know there was a you, there were there was talent and a lot of hard work of course mm -hmm. um and then after nine years with the company I thought you know I'm 28 uh, I would like to prove to myself that I can dance somewhere else. So I uh, sent this DVD to um, the Australian Ballet and the director loved it and offered me a, prin another, a principal job. Wow. And then about, I think three months later, I was in Australia uh, dancing with Australian Ballet and I was there for five years. Um, then I left, Australia was, was very far and mm -hmm. when I was with Australia was when I came to Mexico and that's mm -hmm. when I met you when I, I danced with, as a guest with uh, Ballet de Monterrey and I danced as a guest with the um, Compañía Nacional de Danza in mm -hmm. Mexico City in 2012. Um, but Australia was very, very far. And, and you know, I, I missed my friends. I missed, you know, being closer to, to my family in Cuba. So after five years, I, I left and I, I freelanced for about a year. Um, then I came to the U.S., Mm -hmm. I did a year um, with Cincinnati Ballet as a principal, and then in 2015, I joined Colorado Ballet here in Denver, um, and I've been here for five years now, so I just finished my fifth season, so it's, I, I've been around <laughs> quite a bit, and you know, know. I've been extremely lucky. Sometimes I think, you know, a little me from Cuba, I, mm -hmm. I, could, I could have never imagined that I was going to live this whole life um, thanks to to this passion of mine that i have of, right. of being a ballet dancer so yeah like you've been pretty much everywhere and um yeah when we met like you were freelancing and i remember you were going like everywhere and mm -hmm. well, with australian ballet right yes yeah yeah um i wanted to ask you now that you were in colorado um then you get injured can you tell yes. us a little bit about that yes yeah, so Ah, you know, the, the last five years, Colorado has been one of my favorite companies that I've ever been with. It's, it's a little bit smaller than my previous companies, but, you know, I, I love it here. I have a great relationship with my director and I have amazing friends and, and things like that. And I love Denver, um, but I've been um, extremely unlucky. I've had two big injuries. So in 2016, I was rehearsing the Nutcracker. And I landed from a very small jump and then I tore my Achilles tendon. And that took me out for like almost a year. I had surgery and I had to rehabilitate it for about six months where I had to basically learn how to walk again, go down the stairs, basic things like that. Uh, but I, I worked so hard. I, I think I've always been a hard worker. And I think, I think since my injury, especially after the Achilles, I've become even... Uh, more of a hard worker because um, you have to have a completely different mindset when when you are recovering from an injury where 
where it's like if you are completely is, is out of your control. You have had a surgery and you have to rebuild your technique from zero again right. uh, and be able to get past that terror that is going to happen again, which is, you know, what happens when you have such a big injury. So, uh, so that was in 2016. That happened November 2016. I was back on stage in October 2017. So 11 months. I was, okay. uh, you know, extremely proud of it. I, have an, I had an amazing surgeon. I had an amazing medical team that helped me recover from, from the injury. Um, so obviously, you know, I couldn't have done it uh, by myself. And I had my, my director and the ballet staff were super supportive. I never felt, you know, uh, pushed to come back or anything like mm -hmm. that. And then last June, I was performing on stage and then I went to take off to do a double to the basket and I felt something on my knee and I carried on. And after the show, I was like, hmm, it feels like something is a bit strange here. And I thought maybe I just sprained my knee. Mm -hmm. And then the next day it was super swollen and I had in fact um, to, uh, torn my meniscus. Okay. So I had another surgery. That one was, was easier. I was back on stage dancing Don Q two and a half months after surgery. A little bit too soon. Do not do that, though. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit too soon. Like, they, I had to have my knee drained, like, twice leading up to the performances. And, like, I did the shows with a really, really swollen knee. My surgeon, who was another surgeon, the different, the one that did my Achilles, came to see uh, the show. And he was in disbelief that I, I could perform. Like that. You know, Don Q is not an easy ballet. No. Um, and, you know, I'm 40 years old, so, you know, I was no spring chicken either. So, but I think that actually helped because, you know, you have this knowledge of your body and what to do on stage. And I, I think that really, really helped. And Don Quixote is a ballet that I feel really comfortable doing. So, so that was great. Um, so, so, yeah, those, I had those two big injuries. And now we have this whole situation where we had to finish the season uh, before... Uh, we didn't manage to do the last program we were supposed to do. Uh, so I, I felt like in the last five years, my, my career has been put on hold three times already, twice because of injuries and now because of so this whole pandemic. So, yeah, but, you know, I, 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 I keep thinking to myself, you know what, I'll, I'll survive those two injuries. I, you know, we will all survive this and we will look back on, on this current situation and, and we probably will learn a lot from it. It will make us stronger and closer as well as artists, as, uh, you know, as humans, hopefully. Um, and then hopefully we will look back into it and go like, you know, that was a difficult time, but, but we did it. Yeah. Um, just um, as a general, I don't know, advice or words, because uh, for a dancer to be injured, it takes a big toll also psychologically or like, you know, on your feelings and all that. Um, how do you overcome that? How do you, f how you felt when you got injured? Because I'm guessing exact the moment when you when you felt your Achilles tore or your knee something like what went through your mind and how you overcome. So yeah, the, the Achilles was difficult because it's funny when it happened. As I was landing from the jump, I felt my leg giving out, and then. I, I remember thinking all of this, obviously this was like a fraction of a second, thinking this is not a sprain, you know, as I was going down onto the floor, this is not a sprain, I've had many sprains and this is no one. Uh, so then I fell down and then I looked at my foot, I, my leg was like that behind me and then I saw that my Achilles wasn't there. You know, I had the heel bone sticking out and, you know, you oh have my to God. and the Achilles was in there and I was rehearsing with my director and I remember looking at him, I was like, I said, oh my God, I just snapped my Achilles. And then it came this sense of heartbreak. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was sobbing and like, I remember thinking like, this is it. I'm done. I'm 37 years old. My career is done. I'm never going to dance again. There is not going to be a retirement performance. Oh. No. Yeah. This is it. And I had no say in this whole situation. So I, I, I finally enough, I was not in pain. Thank God. Because if I had oh, wow. to feel the pain, because I, I know people that have torn their Achilles 
And they say it's the most horrific pain they've ever felt. I had absolutely no pain. So much stamina. Like, yeah, yeah. all the adrenaline rushing. Yeah. Uh, so they had, to, they had to bring like a few of the male dancers out to carry me into the, the PT room, the physio room. And, and you know, I was, I was completely and absolutely heartbroken. And I think it took about a few hours. And I remember thinking, okay, well, this happened while I was waiting for an appointment to go and get an MRI. And we knew we had, you know, the physio did a test where you squeeze, squeeze the calf. And if the foot doesn't go like that, it means the Achilles is not there. Oof. Uh, and then I remember thinking, well, you know, this happened. Now you have to, maybe you're going to have the time to learn how to drive because I don't know how to drive. <laughs> I never, you have more time to learn how to drive. And then, you know what, this is going to be a chance for you to get stronger. That was my thought. And I know that everybody doesn't react to things the same way. Like, I, you know, probably some people would have been in a deep depression for a while. I was like, mm -hmm. when I have in a, an injury, it, you know, for a few hours, I'm like heartbroken. And then I become like a man on a mission. It, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's my, this drive takes over me. And I was like, okay, this is what, is going, what has happened. Then it's okay. It's fine. Now, what can we do to, to overcome this? Um, so, yes. you know, you have to be so focused because it's really hard. Like after surgery, I had to like for a month, I think I had to do like some uh, very tiny exercises at home. And then I went to the clinic and little by little you start building. Like you have to like start doing this with your foot and picking marbles with your toes and, wow. you know, little things like that, just basic stuff and doing this with your toes and a towel. And so I remember the first time she put me to... um go down a step because you have to leave your foot behind like mm -hmm. i couldn't like my brain was telling me it was giving me this sense of panic of like mm -hmm. don't don't stop and i thought how am i even going to do a, ever a double tour again a, you know like jumping a double soda basque right uh, but like i said i had an, med an amazing medical team and 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 the recovery was so logical and i mean they know what they're doing so um the mixture of that having people that knew what they were doing and with my drive you know this is my life I love being a ballet dancer I love dancing ballet I have so much respect uh, for this art form and I've had a very long career but it goes like this like it does like 10 years 15 years you like I mean I, when I met you it was eight years ago I know yeah <laughs> it was time. eight years ago this April it was 2012 true Sure. So, so, you know, it goes so fast. So my, my, always my advice to young dancers is like really make every day count because a week wasted, a month wasted, like you will regret it mm -hmm. um, because the career is, is a very short career. I'm extremely lucky that I, I am 40 years old and I'm still able to dance and do everything after all of these injuries, especially, which mm -hmm. have been in effect, a blessing in disguise, because when you go through injuries like that, you have to learn how to do all the things. So I had to do cross training. I had to learn so much about my body, nutrition, you know, things like that, that I have carried all of that knowledge with me for, you know, since I told my Achilles in 2016, I have carried it with me and I still do those exercises. Um, so in a sense, like I said, it was a blessing in disguise. And I, I think it might have actually made my career longer mm -hmm. so, so so that's that's my advice like stay focused um like they, they say says this short pass too um and and you look back and honestly it seems like a long time but you look back in it and it, it seems like a little speck in time after you 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 mm -hmm. through and you learn so much about yourself and you become so much more stronger so so you know just just remain focused work hard and and you're going to have difficult days, do things as well on the side that you, sometimes you don't get the chance to do because we're so busy as ballet dancers. You know, mm -hmm. we work, uh, you know, five, six days a week. Sometimes we perform seven days in a row. So, so get, you know, get to do other things on the side that you usually don't have the time to do because, you know, uh, of your dancer's schedule. Right. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, I know injuries are a hard subject to talk about. But um, 
Okay, on a brighter note, um, I wanted to ask you, what do you think is your most performed role? So, my most performed role, which is probably every dancer's most performed role, is Nutcracker. True. But, Everyone's so, so I performed Nutcracker, my first Nutcracker was 1999. Actually, my first variation, classical variation that I ever did uh, was Nutcracker. I was 15. I went to a competition in Italy. Nice. Um, and I did the variation of uh, Nutcracker and Coppelia. So that was my first uh, classical, classical variation that I did. And then um, my first, no, my first full length was Coppelia. But then since 1999, I've been doing Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. uh, in England, we, do re we did it every year. So I did it for nine years. In Australia, they don't have that tradition. So I only did it oh, twice yes. in five years. Yeah. And then since then, I mean, I've been doing it for the last, as well, seven years. So I've probably done a cracker. I mean, I've been doing a cracker for the last 20 years. But my most performed role after that, I think, is Basilio in Don Quixote. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and I love, I love that role. Right. Uh, it's so fun. You know, I think me being Cuba help, Cuban help helps, uh, you know, with the character and the role. Um, I've done it. I mean, I've done it with the company as a guest in Croatia, I did it with Compañía Nacional de Danza in Mexico. I did it with um, the Australian Ballet. Mm -hmm. I just did it here with um, the Colorado Ballet. So I've done it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So it's a, it's a role that I'm very familiar with, very comfortable in. And probably that's one of the reasons why I said to you, I went back and I performed Don Q two and a half months after knee surgery. If it would have been something else, Mm -hmm. Like in Beauty or Swan Lake or something like that, uh, probably would have been more difficult. But I was like, you know what? I, I think I can do this. So I, literally started, I started rehearsing Don Q because the surgery was two and a half months before. So I only managed to start rehearsing two weeks before opening. What? So it was really <laughs> close. Yeah, I was, yeah. My director was like, are you sure you can do this? I'm like, I can do it. I can do it. I, I, oh I, my I, goodness I, gracious. And I was like, oh my God, I hope I'm not going to make a fool of myself on stage. <laughs> But it, it went really well. So, so yeah, Don, Don Q is, is, a, is a big one for me uh, and, and a, a role that I, I love doing. Um, so, so, yeah, that's, that's probably the, the, the most second performed ones without counting Nutcracker. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, this question I should specify Nutcracker aside because, uh, yeah. yeah every, you know, we, that we, dance, uh, we do Nutcracker every yeah. year. So it's part of, it's, it's like, like part of our you know, nutrition as, as artists, you know, so. <laughs> totally. Um, so from uh, Don Q, from Basilio, is there a show in specific that, I don't know, it feels like it changed your career or it changed the way you dance that role or there was a special moment of a special show doing Basilio? I've had a lot of special shows with Don Q. Uh, you know, my first show coming back from, from the surgery with Don Key was pretty special. I had both my surgeons, the one that did my knee and the one that did uh, <laughs> my Achilles in the audience. So that, that was pretty special. Um, at the same time, it was quite scary because you kind of like, you're in act one, you're like, am I going to make it all the way? To... But then I, I did all my shows and it was, it was great. Um, I think that is, with Australian Ballet, I did the New Rayer version and it was the last... Um, ballet that I did with the company so it was quite incredible because I the last show I closed I closed the Sydney season at the Sydney Opera House so I did the last performance of Don Q uh, I think I did six shows um, I did two in, the, in Melbourne and four in Sydney and it almost felt like they, they were incredible it, it almost felt like my retirement the way it was done because you know there was a huge press announcement uh, like all of my friends from Australia, people from Melbourne, from Sydney, they came to watch my show. Uh, the dancers that were not dancing, they were watching the show. And mm -hmm. at the end of the show, like, you know, they brought flowers and there were things falling from the ceiling and, you know, things like that. So it almost felt like, like a retirement, like the way that we do retirement. And I think, I think I'm always very grateful to them uh, for the way they send me off. Because um, not every company, a lot of the time when dancers decide to leave a company, that's it. A lot of the time, the directors are not very happy about it. It's a little bit of a difficult, you know, situation. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they were incredible with me. And, and they, they sent me off, like, which was one of the things at the back of my mind when I told my Achilles, I was like, well, if I never have a proper retirement performance, 
then I will always have that one of Don, Don Q with Australian Ballet because he felt like that. Um, right. You know, the kind of one that you get teary and, you know, and you, it, 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 when usually when you see a dancer that is retiring, you know, it was kind of like that. So, so and there was my performances of Don Q with the Compañía Nacional de Danza in Mexico mm -hmm. at, at the Bellas Artes Theater. Um, I did two shows. And you know, there are those shows where you, everything just works, your mm -hmm. song, your leg, and everything just like, you are like, okay, I'm gonna kill this today, and I'm gonna do everything that I wanna do. And funnily enough, both shows were like that. Were two magical shows that, Amazing. you know, like now I watch the video back, and you know, so cause sometimes you do like one really great show, and you think, oh God, how am I gonna keep up after <laughs> that one, you know? Right. And I watched sometimes both videos, and it was like the same, you know, it was, the same amount of period, yeah, it was, so it was pretty extraordinary. And, and the company was so incredible with me. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody was so welcoming and so nice. So, so I have had, I would say, uh, three very special uh, performances of, of Donkey. It's always hard when you, you know, when you dance so much and that mm -hmm. you pinpoint just one. Um, yes. So, so I, I give you, I give you three. And those That's three, amazing. That's, yeah. um, let me just read here because I think somebody had a question. What is the most that you like being on stage? Oh, what, you, what do you like being on stage the most? Like, what, like why do you like being on stage? <laughs> well, I, I am someone who gets very nervous to dance. Really? Oh, I get so nervous. You have no, no idea. Way. I like freak out before shows. Yeah, I have to I've like, never thought of that. I literally have to like in the dressing room, like I, I have to do affirmations in front of the mirror. And I have to talk to myself and say, like, you got this. You're ready. You are good. You got this. You're rehearsed. You're prepared. Mm -hmm. um, so, but then funny enough, then I get on stage. And another thing, the older you get, the more nervous you get because the more you question everything. Mm -hmm. When you're younger, when you are 20, you're like, you get out there and it's like, you give a thousand percent to everything. It's like, it's like honestly, it's like a lion out of a cage. Um, mm -hmm. When you become a principal, you have the rank, the pressure. People are, have expectations. And people are coming to see specifically your show. So, uh, but once I get I, I get on stage, it's like, it's, it, this thing takes over me. Um, but apart from the technique, the thing that I enjoy the most being on stage is is just becoming someone else. Like I love, love, love doing different roles. You know, where you have to tell a story. That's why I, I love things like. I, I, I think my, my three favorite ballets as an artist to dance are um, Manon, Romeo and Juliet, and Giselle. Right. Because it's not just about the technique, you know, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. so much more than that. You have mm -hmm. to tell a story, you, you know, you have to die, you have to cry, you have to, so, so for me, that's very appealing as, as a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think for me, that's, that's the most special thing that I look forward to the most when I'm on stage is to to really just for two hours, three hours, just become someone else and, and being able to take the audience on a journey with me. That's that's mm -hmm. very important to make it believable for them, you know. Right. Um, I'm so happy you mentioned those ballads because that's actually how we met when you were doing Giselle. Um, oh my gosh, I remember every time, every rehearsal, just super full out and like, I don't know, it will give us, you know. That's right. I, I did you sell when I came there. That's right. <laughs> Were you the back. company st uh, still when I came back in 2015? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I and came I back again yeah, to dance again with Kathy. Yeah. I was in Cincinnati Ballet. And I think I had one rehearsal. I came in, I had one run through, and then we went to the theater the next day because I had no time to rehearse. Right. Yeah. yeah and yeah, I, yeah. Hadn't I, done, I hadn't done Giselle since 2012, three years before that. So I did it with three shows, but you know, you guys as well, that's another example of like, you know, when you go and some, not every company is like that. I've been in companies where you arrive there and people are like, what is, what is he doing here? <laughs> why, you know, why do we <laughs> Who have, is this person? Who is this person? Um, I'm not going to say where, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, like, like, for example, you guys, like, I, I felt so loved and so welcome and I thrive on that. You know, because mm -hmm. otherwise you feel insecure. You feel like, uh, oh, you know, I appreciate it. So, so that was a, a, a really fantastic memory. And um, that, yeah. Of, so, will you say 
so will you say as a principal dancer you feed from the whole company's energy for order to um i don't know achieve oh, the my God, artistic yes. expression of a character oh my god yes and i you know one one thing that really relaxes me when i perform uh i look at people in the eyes so when i go around like in long or something like i go and i talk to people and You know, it's just like sometimes if I do something, I, you know, if you only can see me, I wink at them. And, and that really relaxes me. You know, if I get too much in my, then I overthink what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And another thing, I, I get more nervous when I perform because of my colleagues, people that are around me. I feel right. that, more, that pressure is, for me is a bigger pressure than actually the, the audience that is aside, funnily enough. Um, mm -hmm. Because you as a dancer, you know, they say, fake it till you make it. You have to, regardless of what it happens, you have to keep going and, and pretend, you know, if Piret goes wrong or this or that, you just have to carry on and, and pretend that was part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you have the dancers around you, they know when something goes wrong, you know? And, and I, I have so much respect for the people that I work with that I, I, I get, you know, I feel like I have this feeling of, I don't want to let, to let them down. So that's, that's my thing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, well, that's that's wonderful. Uh, I wanted to ask you: Are there any funny moments that happened to you on stage, perhaps? Yes. <laughs> well, let's go back to Don Q. My closing of show. Course. My closing show of Don Q. Now, after coming back from the knee, um, my partner and I start Act Three Saturday. Um, So we go into our, uh, which one was it? It was after our, um, I think it was our second or third part of the show in the beginning. Da, 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 da. And then when she, when she goes to Bure, my sleeve gets cut, it her tattoo opens. No. And I'm... we get stuck. So we're like in the middle of the part, they try to become unhooked. And then I, I'm like, you know, smiling okay. all of this and, you know, we're like, And then I say to her, hey, we're stuck, let's go. So we just run off, literally for like an eight. We came a hook, I crossed everything, and then we came back off, and then we reprise again. We took again in tan, tan, ta, tan, ting, ta, ta, ta. We ran, we ran to the stage and we did ta, da, 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 da. <laughs> So, and then as the, father, as the father that keeps going on, um, I keep having this uh, feeling of my hands were wet. Um, and the, the Marley on the floor was white. And then I start looking and we're all dressed in white because it's the wedding. Yeah. I start looking and it's like, there is like blood, spattles, you know, everywhere. And I'm like, Where did I come and from? I realized I taken a piece of my finger. <laughs> no. I taken a piece of my finger trying to unhook, you know, so I'm the whole time like seeing my, my tights are getting bloody. But you know what, actually, I, I thrive in that kind of situations. Mm -hmm. um, it really relaxed me for some reason. Like when I finished, uh, then I went off before my variation. I was less tired. I danced even better. Um, so people actually thought that, you know, my partner had a back spasm right uh, the few days before that. Wow. And the audience, people that knew that she had a back spasm, when we ran off, they thought, oh, her back went again. No. <laughs> But yeah, so it was I, not that. And I went to a festival in, in Cali, in Colombia, and doing Don Q Pa de Day in the festival, in the same Padesha, her tutu completely open when I, when I lifted her, completely open at the back. And every hook got stuck with me. So we spent the whole grandpa de Day, like trying to unhook ourselves. And every time I would do a pirouette, she would, uh, it, was, it was quiet. But then I was like, you know what? Now I'm going to go and try to kill my variation because that's what you have to do. Uh, so like I said, this, this kind of situa situations, I thrive on them. I'm kind of like, okay, well, this happened. Well, let's okay, just pretend you. that this didn't happen even. So it was pretty obvious that it happened. I feel like you're so strong mentally that you're like, okay, let's do it. Next thing. Honestly, it comes, it comes it, you know, being a dancer and aging is a funny thing because your body starts changing but your mind, you're becoming stronger and more knowledgeable. So, you know, maybe like your body doesn't feel the same way. You, you don't jump as higher. Uh, you know, everything hurts a little bit more, but because you have the knowledge of how to be on stage, you actually don't need as much effort anymore. You know how to find the 
times and the places where you can relax, where you can breathe, you realize that it's not necessary to give a thousand percent on everything because it doesn't translate to the audience if you like do everything with the same force. So, so yeah, it's, 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 you know, that kind of things come with age. Probably if, if it would have happened to me when I was 17, I would have like, didn't know, I would have known what to do with myself afterwards. I would right. have probably been fine afterwards or something like that. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, um, let's, um, I do want to ask you another question before we get into the lightning round. Okay. Uh, if you were not a ballet dancer, what would you like to be? Uh, probably, probably an actor. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Even, it would have to be, I, I couldn't do a normal nine to five job. Yeah. I would have loved to sing, but I'm not a great singer. I mean, I can hold a tune, but I'm not, I would, I don't think I would have had a, an international career as a singer. Uh, so, and like going back into what I said to you, I love those ballets where you have to, to yeah. act probably I would have loved to be an actor. So, so yeah, so whether it's theater, uh, you know, TV or something like that, it, it's some kind of actor for sure, where I have to- Great, to I think you can still do it. I mean, sometimes, it's never you know, Sometimes I have that thought like, you know, cause you're so busy as a dancer and so people say you should get an agent. And I'm like, when? Like <laughs> literally my schedule is always so like, you know, even when we are on, on a break, I. I teach, I go to England and I teach or I do some guestings. Like literally everything is, is, is you know, packed. it is packed, it's booked. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that's my next chapter. You know, I would, I, you know, I, 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 talking about future, I, I've always loved teaching and directing. So, so my dream would be eventually to, to become an artistic director. I, I think I, 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 you know, I think I could be a really good one. I think I can, with all the, the knowledge and experience and, uh, and being a dancer and, you know, how to treat dancers, I, I, I know that I thrive better when I am um, pushed, but in a good way with, you know, uh, without trying to put me down. So mm -hmm. I, I know that I, I probably would be that kind of uh, director who, who would try to, to motivate people. And that, 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 that's, right. that's the way. We need, that, we need more of those. Yeah, the, that's the way yeah. personally that I thrive. I, if you are no... If you're not very nice to me, I just like go the rebel, rebel. So, so yeah, I, I don't want to be that kind of. Actor, yeah. <laughs> no, you, you're wonderful. Thank okay, you. Okay, let's get into the lightning round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, kind of okay. like yes or no, or these or that. Okay. And okay. they're not too, too fast. And we can elaborate in whatever you want to elaborate. We okay. do only have 15 more minutes uh, okay. before Instagram cuts us off. Um, so, yeah. Okay, first. Do you like, prefer tandis or plies? Tandis. Jumps or turns? Turns. Uh, Siegfried or, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Basilio, sorry. <laughs> ha, that's a tough one. Um, huh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Basilio, but they're, they're both very different. I, I, I love doing both, but I, I, I think I, yeah, ba Basilio. Let's say Basilio. Okay, okay let's say Basilio. Uh, prodigal Son or Apollo? Prodigal Son. Have you done it? I have not. I have not. I, oh. ha I have a, a few times mentioned it to, to my directors, like, you know, because I, I think, yeah, and it's usually, it's usually a short, short guy with a tall girl mm -hmm. as a siren. So I, I think, you know, I, I saw with Carlos Acosta at the Opera House and I've seen the video mm -hmm. with Misha, with Varishnikov. So uh, I remember watching it. I was like, oh, yes, I think this would be one that I could really like I leave, leave myself in it. Mm -hmm. So definitely a prodigal son. Okay, amazing. Which brings me to, um, where is it? Where is it? Carlos Acosta or Rolando Sarabia? Oh, <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> um, hmm. Different times. You know, Carlos is a very, is, was a very imp important part of my life because Carlos was the first answer that, that I ever saw in the newspaper. And, and I remember the article, I was about 12, and the article was called El Mulato de Oro. Mm. 
So the golden, I don't know how you can say mulatto. Well, mulatto, I think that's, that's you know, with, yeah. I think most uh, people know what that means. Yes. Yeah. And I remember the whole story was, you know, about, you know, who he was and all, all of that. And I was in Kamaway. I was not in National Ballet School. And I remember telling my teacher, I have to go to Havana. I have to be in the National Ballet School because that's a big school. I want to finish my studies there. So um, I went to a dance festival where I did a palette that I choreographed when I was 14. And his teacher, who is a director, I don't know if you know her, Ramona de Sa, Cherry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She saw me. Uh, I did this little palette that I choreographed. I was 14. And then I remember take, being taking, I'm sorry that I'm going to this whole backstory, but it's why it's so important. That's okay. Which is, it was, which is why I'm, I am where I am now. I was taking my makeup off and my teacher came and she was like, oh my God, Ramona just saw you. And she said, can you take him back to come away? He needs to finish all his exams before everybody else. Cause I want him back here in Havana and I want to prepare him for a competition in Italy. I went to Italy. I won gold. She prepared me for a month. And then after that, I joined National Ballet School. So uh, Carlos and Ramona are like one of the reasons why I am where I am and who I am. So I, I, I owe a lot to them. I, he's a big inspiration to me. Sarabi and I were in school together. <laughs> um, and when we were in school, Sarabia was like, I mean, his technique is like, like nothing I've ever seen. So, um, so I, I love those two guys. Carlos for a, di for a different reason, because he, he's a big, you know, part of, of, uh, of me becoming who I am today. So, yeah. So let's, let's say Carlos first and Sarabia second. Okay. You love them both. I do love it's them. It's all right. Um, very silly question. Gerotonics, Pilates, or yoga? For me, Pilates. Really? I thought you were yes. going to say Gero. For me, I work with um, one of my best friends, Lisa. She's a Pilates instructor, and she has helped me as well to get over, you know, recover from my injuries. And it's not a straightforward Pilates. She has, like, she has her own method that she's adapt to, like, ballet dancers and things like that so sometimes a lot of times when i go to her like you know what i feel like for like for theme and variations and things like that, i have to do under chassis i need exercise to for under chassis so she gives me a bunch of things like that if i said to her when i'm turning i feel like lately i'm leaving my left side behind so she will give me things on discs with like bands and things like that so i i have a lot of um respect for for especially the pilates that she teaches and uh mm -hmm. And for me, has worked wonders. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite food? My favorite food is, is, this is hard. There is a lot of things that I love, things that I don't eat anymore because I became vegan in October. But I love my favorite food. Well, first of all, the food that my mom cooks. Mm -hmm. But anything that has beans in it i love beans i was just gonna say carros con concrete oh my god i'm you know which has been my salvation becoming vegan because i can be you know beans is full of proteins and fiber and i love all of them i love black kidney lentils chickpeas all of them so i and i i love like soupy foods not more than like dry foods so 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 if i had to choose one uh to Cooking different, you know, different ways, I would say, beans. Mm, delicious. Okay, this is kind of a funny one. Um, J-Lo or Shakira? J-Lo. Oh, because yeah. <laughs> me being 40, I, I look up to people who, who are certain age and are still killing it. Yes. You know, and 40 is not 40 anymore. And 50 is not 50 anymore. Like, you know what, I'm 40, I'm about to be 41 in, in two months. So what? I love you it. Know, if you take care of yourself and, and you are good and you are focused and you work hard and, you know, like I said, your body changes, but you find ways around and you become a better artist and things like that. So uh, for me, J-Lo, because she's a big inspiration in, in that sense. She's 50, I think, and she's just like incredible. Amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, let's finish up with that. Saludos, que placer escucharlos. Uh, if anyone wants to uh, ask any questions right now, 
right now is the time because we have to cut very soon. But if not, uh, you guys can always send us a DM and I'll make sure to send it to just Vanny. Yeah, I'll be happy to, to reply to, reply yeah, to them yeah. later on. Like, um, yeah. Okay, just to finish off, what do you say is your life motto? My life motto is... You know, I, I think especially if, um, from the injuries and from this situation that we're going through right now, um, you know, life is short and it can be very fragile. So my life motto is always is uh, be present mm -hmm. and enjoy every second of it. Because life is amazing, you know. It's not always easy, but you learn a lot from the difficult things. Uh, it makes you who you are and makes you stronger. So um, so my advice always, especially, you know, when I said to you earlier, to younger people and younger dancers, I'd like really like be present and don't take any minute for granted. Life goes through like this. So be present and make every second count. Amazing. Okay, I think we're going to finish up with that. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, and if you guys want to take class with just Vanny, I'm pretty sure he's uh, doing live stream classes. I sure am. Uh, yes. Uh, do you want to tell us more about your classes? Yes, I um, I'm doing my next one is going to be on Thursday. Uh, so 10 a.m. Denver time. So for you, that's what 12 p.m. Yes. Yes. Correct. So 10 a.m. Mountain time. And, um, you know, I try to make it fun. I try to make it you know, uh, challenging as well, because um, we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation. So, so, you know, but I always say people, you know, just change, do whatever you need to do and just have a good time and literally dance like nobody's watching because nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. So this that. is a good time for, <laughs> I have friends that have joined the live stream and they haven't danced in like seven years. And I said, this is the right time to do it. So, so why not? So yeah, yeah. my next That's one great. is Thursday, 10 a.m. Denver time. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Having. Great talking to you. Great seeing you here again after. Great seeing you. I hope Take you have care. a good night and everyone Bye. have a good dinner. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And if you guys would like to take class with us at the fifth, uh, tune in every day this uh, next week uh, for 11 a.m. Uh, Inter Advance um, Ballet or Limon on Monday or Martha's Mindful Movement. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys had fun and I hope to see you guys next week because the lineup for next week is fun. All right. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.